generally I look towards things. I mean, I'm a, I'm a pretty factual person. I think market economics is, is quite a bit of it. I think we've, we've caught up with where the market is and we're seeing revitalization in other towns. It's helped promoting it here. Um, whenever uh, we travel as a community, we're starting to see things that we want elsewhere and saying, why don't we have this here? Mm-hmm. Um, it took a long time for the Brown Hoist site to be marketable where a developer was willing to take that on. Um, we still have kind of a soft market, so it's difficult to do development here. Um, it would be a lot easier if you could just build something and get what it costs to build the building back in rent. Um, <laughs> we're not, we're not there yet. Um, but the more we can get growth and change, um, the more the market starts shifting towards, um, the love to be down near the water, the love for the old historic buildings, um, the more it helps preserve them for communities like ours, because when people want to be in them, all of a sudden people care enough to preserve them mm-hmm. or you can find the funding to do it, which is important. Right, and there's got to be some funding out there. A lot? Um, Michigan, Florida would have been easier. <laughs> oh, really? Why is that? Um, I think that the Michigan as a whole has just suffered a lot um, oh, with the, the economic changes, with you know the fact that we were basically a, a manufacturing hub and our entire economy wasn't diversified enough. So then what happens when you know so many aspects of the economy crumble and so many families are left uh, hardest hit? Where does the government put its money? You know, it has to feed these families. It has to take care of these families. Um, houses need to be maintained. You know, there's not a lot of extra dollars beyond education, health, and human services and infrastructure when we're overbuilt and losing our population. Good point. Yeah. Um, to put towards, you know, a pretty architectural facade. You're right. <laughs> Good point, yes. Well, well said as well. So now Detroit's coming back somewhat. Um, Flint's coming back somewhat. Saginaw is coming back somewhat. A lot of uh, stuff's being done on Saginaw's waterfront. Mm-hmm. Um, but sorry, very few places do I see as much going on as in Bay City. We have that whole new uptown and, and what you're doing downtown. Mm-hmm. And... What else is going on? There's new some new condos being built. All the apartments are full. There's waiting lists for all the apartments. Yeah, I was in Detroit um, last week, actually. So I was meeting with HUD, um, and they say to me, well, how, how saturated is your housing market downtown? Do you have, you know, 100, 150 units? Um, what's it like? I was like, um, there may be 50 right now. We may have 50. So we have a a lot of room for growth, I think. I think I see a lot that's happening downtown. Um, I've heard some rumors of some other things that may be going on right now, so I'm very, very excited about those. Um, I think one of the biggest things that we've done as a downtown is we've started attracting more people in. So we Mm -hmm. do a great job with the festivals. We're a festival town. The waterfront gives us that. I think the about two years ago, the State Theater of Bay City took over the management of Winona Park. So when they started doing the movies in the park, the concerts in the park, and getting people coming back to downtown Bay City and to the park, even if it was just on a weekday evening, it it just started to turn things around in another way. Um, we started to see more restaurants. Mm-hmm. I think that arts and entertainment um, can really promote growth in so many ways. Right. It- Exactly, because if you go to big cities, restaurants are all full, Mm -hmm. theaters are full, it amazes me, Mm -hmm. like Ann Arbor even, and that's not even that big of a city, but it's a college town. Think of another one. Well, Chicago, but that's too big. Give me another example of a city about our size that is booming. Traverse. Ah, good one. Yep, and it's the same things. there, And it's not that you're getting... You're gearing it toward tourists because you're not. You're gearing it toward getting people out of their homes, Mm -hmm. which is really cool. 
I think so. I think that it's more, it's not necessarily just about tourism or festivals. It's more about hometown pride sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I think Bay City had such a bad reputation for a long time. You know, growing up here, what did everyone call it? They called it Bay Shitty. Um, (laughs) You know, the fact that we're not hearing that anymore. We're kind of changing um, that ideology. We have to change the ideology and the place identity that we're a fun place to be and a vibrant place to be. And then we have all these activities and festivals that we're not just um, this kind of old manufacturing town that's that's dying out. Do we have our, our issues and our problems? Sure, absolutely. Are we working to do something about it? Yeah, we are. Like, we, we want to grow again. Mm-hmm. We're seeing this decline. We're seeing this population shortfall. We're not seeing any more young families and things like that come in. Well, what happens if we don't have young families? We have to close elementary schools. We, right. we don't have any growth. We don't have any future. Um, the concern becomes what happens when, you know, a senior citizen decides to move on in their life and move out of their house if we don't have anyone that wants to buy it. Right, exactly. And the market this year, um, from my friends that are in real estate, the market this summer has been as close to the pre-2009 as it's been in this past seven years. So it is coming back. The market's coming back. Is the value coming back? Not as quickly, I don't think. It's climbing, but it's... Right. Um, I don't think it'll ever be as high as it was in two... the late eighties, early nineties. I don't, I don't know. I think that the, the value is going to take time. I think there's, it depends on the neighborhoods and the areas. So Mm -hmm. some, some have, you know, the more houses that you have that are maybe neglected on your block, your, your values are going to suffer. When you have homeowners that really take pride in what they do, they're not going to suffer so much. Um, there's a lot of times too where in other cities and, and even other cities that are that are our size, where you build public private partnerships with land banks and developers that do single family homes mm. or want to convert them. Um, either the city or the developer, they just notice this this house that's just ruining it for the block, and they just say, "Hey, we need to do that. We need to buy that house. We need to change it. We need to we need to do something about that one house because it's stressing out the neighborhood." Right. And if we can just fix that one little nerve, we're going to restore the flow of that neighborhood. Um, And they call that urban acupuncture. Oh, I never heard of that. I love that. And, you know, if you drive through Saginaw, that is, I mean, it is there. Mm -hmm. And there'll be some really nice, gorgeous houses. And then one that's, maybe it's been in the family for a really long time and they just can't take care of it anymore. Yeah. And then I feel bad because those other houses, if those people have been in them as long, they've lost so much money. I mean, so much. Like hundreds. It happened in my mother's home, the home that I grew up in. It went from almost two hundred to $83,000. My goodness. Yeah, that's pathetic. It's really sad. But uh, things are changing. Things are growing. Things are livening up again. I hope so. Um, I'm I'm on a mission to to keep us on this this path forward. Good, uh, that's really good. And a lot of people are walking that path with you. We're going to take a little break now. When we come back, we're going to visit some more with Jennifer Acosta. I'm going to open the phone lines in case you want to call in. And we have a couple sponsors here tonight, but hopefully Beth Chorba will be here. And if not, we'll be visiting with them as well. So make sure that you stay tuned to the Devolution Show with our guest, Jennifer Acosta, talking about growth and change, both personal and inter- and intra-city. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll be right back. Divas are going to refill their wine glasses. The Devolution Show will be right back. 
Over 200,000 Michigan seniors will be affected by the dramatic changes to certain Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan Medicare plans. For many, expert guidance will be required. A consultation with a nationally recognized Medicare expert based right here in Michigan is available free of charge. You can call us at 855-463-9688 or check us out at www dot gh2 benefits.com please be sure to visit and like our facebook page that's gh2 benefits ew what's that smell they must not have used poo poo be gone yeah don't let yourself be the topic of conversation in the local bathrooms use poo poo be gone police Call the Zingy Divas for introductory price of $5 at, call at 989-225-6090 or trust me, it works. Personal pampering from head to toe with Hairspray Holly, including nail art, hair treatments, special occasions, and so much more. Call Holly today at 989-225-8887. Fun, friends, and a good time just starts to describe the enjoyment of the Sunrise Pedal Trolley. We offer a new and unique way to travel around Bay City and experience our area's culture, history, specialty, and antique shops. And, of course, our local pub. The Sunrise Pedal Trolley is a 15-person, people-powered bike. Whether you're out on a wine walk, trying the newest micro beer, or just out to have some fun, we offer an experience like no other. Our riders pick the stops before we begin, making each tour different. To book a tour, visit sunrisepedaltrolley.com. Wine glasses are full, the divas are ready. Now back to the Devolution Show. So we're back with our guest, Jennifer Acosta. It's her first time on the show. She is a real estate developer. And um, she's doing a lot of work downtown Bay City, which is quite lovely. And we really appreciate it. So uh, while we were on break, I was checking our messages. Save that for after. Um, I was checking our messages, and we have a couple people that uh, would like to talk to you. Um, so they told me to get your information. So I- I'll ask her. Um, anyway, we have the phone lines open. If you would like to ask Jennifer a question, uh, you can call at 989-402-5414. That's 402-5414. So we were talking, our subject today is growth and change. So Obviously, you love what you do. If you could be doing anything else, what would it be? Uh, So my husband's family in northern Spain, um, really, really rural area outside of this town called Santiago de Compostela. And we were visiting last year. It was the same time we we went to Spain for 10 days and we took our kids, a two-year-old and a six-month-old, on 14-hour car rides. We went to Barcelona and then we (laughs) went all the way across Spain. We drove to Santiago de Compostela. Then we went down to Portugal. So I I tell my husband on this car ride, hey, I think I'm going to leave my job and start a company. And he was like, okay. (laughs) And we get to this hotel that I had found and it was an old paper mill that was transformed into this gorgeous boutique hotel by a fantastic architect. And I felt like I was home. Like I just never want to leave. I could create that in Michigan. That would pretty much be the only thing I would ever leave my day job for right now. Huh. Yeah. That's my wildest dreams. <laughs> wildest dreams come true, you know. Do we have paper mills in Michigan? No. <laughs> I remember I remember there was one in Tyrone, Pennsylvania that we used to make sure that we fell asleep before we got to it because it smelled so badly. Oh. 
They they must have taken care of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because you would have known it. Yeah. Oh, that was a horrible stench. No, but we have all kinds of other industrial buildings. Yes, we do. So um, mm-hmm. some people. The number again is four zero two five four one four. If you would like to call in, we can only take one caller at a time. So be patient if you call in. 